turn over to Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Put your finger in Joshua 1, 8. Put your finger in Luke 8. Put your finger in Matthew 17. Put your finger in Isaiah 58. <laughs> you can use your toes. <laughs> Amen. Now, what was the first one I gave you? Joshua 43. Okay. Amen. Praise God. Nothing wrong with my memory. You get up here. And you'll see how this goes. The Holy Ghost is be dropping stuff. Amen. Cordia Shando Shababosia. You coming out. It's called the abundance. And it's so much in you. You bursting loose. And I'm saying something to you. Nothing or no one will be able to stop you. I'm going back to Quanah. 43.18 Amen of Isaiah And I said Nothing in the future shall bound you Nothing in the present shall bound you But there leaves a door Or an entrance point And sometimes it's our past The enemy will wear you out About things that you may have done Or may have happened in the past Amen Alright somebody have 43.18 Who has it? I don't want you to read. I want you just to listen. Who has it? First lady? Okay. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Okay, remember ye what? Not the former things. You say, well, I had a lot of former things that have helped me and that were good and that were bad. God said, you are totally new. Because you need a newness in this dispensation. Do you understand? And he's bringing forth. Read the rest. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and river in the desert. A river in the desert. And a way in the wilderness. Okay, so what is the requirement for this to happen? What's that? You got to forget the past. Because there's a new anointing and a new place in you. Mm. Things that were hard are now going to become easy. If you don't fall back to the past. Come, 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 come closer, 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 closer. Do you understand what thus saith the Lord? Amen. New stuff, baby. New stuff, new quana, new relationship with God. You burst and loose. Say quana, intercessor prophetess. You burst and loose. I'm almost scared of you. If I didn't know you, I'd be scared of you. Mm. See, and you wonder why Jesus moaned. What did he do? He went. Mm. Y'all don't know nothing about moaning and groaning. Amen. Y'all don't know anything about moaning and groaning. But let's take this book and put it over our hearts as we make our allegiance unto the Lord. And as I said, as we make this allegiance, pledge, pledge of allegiance, you can even bow, okay, and kneel, okay? You can stand. You can sit down if you really had to. But we're going to stand in liberty where Christ set us free, never again to be entangled in the yoke of bondage. Amen. Amen. And you're going to repeat after me. This book of the law shall not depart from my mouth, and I will meditate on it both day and by night. I will observe to do the things that are written therein, and I will make my way prosperous, and I will have good success in Jesus' name. God has received a commandment to bless and he has blessed and he said he cannot reverse it no matter what happens who points a finger where there's lack where there's disappointment 
he has blessed and it will not be reversed so I need to act like I am blessed because I'm blessed to be a blessing so everybody I see everything that I speak is out of the continuity of just being blessed you may be seated let the words of my mouth the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight because thou art Lord my strength my redeemer and my God and thou art my sufficiency all sufficiency my El Shaddai hallelujah, hallelujah. let's go over to uh, Matthew 17 and just remember you have I might probably will not cover all of these scriptures praise God and um, Isaiah 58 hallelujah and amen and you know as the spirit moves I gotta move <laughs> amen glory be to God man of God man of God Can I get you to stand please amen the Lord says that this is a season of open doors mm. so you have been pressing and pressing in is your father in your life? Not really, really has not ever been there. Amen. That's what the Spirit of God says. Mm. So God says that the Spirit of God and the ministry of the Father, amen, to the Son, amen, and in this season, that ministry, because men need the confidence instilled in them by a father because the father handles the soul how you think your emotion your will and he said in spite of such you have walked a straight and narrow but there's been a vacancy because of the father issue God said this is a season that you have been united with the father son behold your father father behold your son Come on, somebody. Amen. 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 Glory be to God. And I see that I see that I see multitudes of opportunities. And the spirit of discouragement that would come before, amen, has to now come before your heavenly father and your earthly father. Mm, and in uh, John 12, Jesus says, where I am will my servant also be. And I don't know if you've been here through the messages of God's positional strategies with the servant's mantle. Amen. And God has something for me to pass on to you. The pure revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Hallelujah and amen. Bless you. Amen. All right, let's go to Matthew 17. We're dealing with the GPS and the GPS today we're going to look at is the fasting and prayer fasting and prayer okay fasting and prayer now you can fast and not pray Amen. and you do have value from that but you get greater value when you fast and pray you can pray and not fast and you get fervent effectual results but when you put them together, Shekinah glory of your prayer, amen, it's like super saturated turbocharged, amen, because it releases the fleshly interference, the carnal interference, because we know that in Romans 8 that the carnal mind is an enmity unto God, not subject to the laws of God, neither can it be, for to live carnally is unto death, but to live spiritually is unto life amen praise God so we're talking about prayers and time with God that are alive amen and that they're quickened that they're quickened what is quickening life Jesus said the words that I speak are spirit and they are life amen the flesh profit nothing what's the prophet nothing but the spirit is brought to life the deeds of the flesh are mortified where? In the spirit that you might live. Live. 
most of the time we're existing in situations and not fully living the ordained, consecrated life that God wants us to live. Amen? Amen. And that consecration and the ordained life is trusting God. Because anytime you don't trust God, it, 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 you, you're not, your mind, you, you might be walking in sanctification in the, in the flesh, but your mind ain't sanctified. Amen. Come, on. Come on, man, God. Amen. Amen. Because my mind has to be stayed on what? Jesus, so that I can have what? Perfect peace because I trust him. It don't say my body. So, so many times we're looking at the outward sanctification and not looking at the sanctification of the soul and the soul's relationship with the spirit that they come together because eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, nor into the heart of man what God's going to do for them that love him. But he revealed these things to us by the spirit. Amen. So in Amen. this particular Amen. season, we're looking at the spirit in treating the things of God. Amen. It's not by might, not by power, Amen. but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Come on. Hello, somebody? Amen. And as the prophet Zechariah brought that to us, it's by the Spirit. Right. So I'm saying you're going to see things. you got to see. See, not from the natural eye, but from the spiritual eye. Because the natural eye is only limited to light frequencies, okay? Limited to distance, amen? But there is no distance. There is nothing that can impute seeing in the Spirit except for the flesh. Come on. Except for the flesh. The only thing that can hinder it. Because you, you can't see it. You can't see it. Or well, the just shall live, shall walk by, I mean, we shall walk by faith and not by sight. Okay? That doesn't mean you can't see. Okay? You can't see in the spirit. And it tells us in 2 Corinthians 4 that the things that are seen in the natural, they're what? Temporal. Okay? They're just here for a moment. But the things that are seen in the spirit are where? Eternal. So you want to open the eyes of our understanding. And in fact, go over to um, Ephesians 1, verse 18. I'm going to have you all over the place in this little bit of time First Lady's giving me. All right. But I'm telling you, you wait till the Women's Fellowship. Oh, my God. You coming, Mother Beth? You coming to the Women's Fellowship this Saturday, 1030, right here? You plan to? Good. Bring somebody. Bring a whole bunch of women. Okay? Bring they all know about me? Oh God. They know it good. Good stuff about me. You say things are good. Okay. I might go back into my repertoire of the Bishop Gone Wild series. Alright? Don't go there, Mark. What's that? Apostle Gone Wild. Okay. Alright, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Well, you know, in, in the, what is it, girls going wild, they be taking off their clothes and whatnot. But let me tell you something, in the apostle going wild, you're going to take off the clothes of shame, take off dead clothes, take off, mm, you're going to take off the hindrances, come on somebody, take off the unfaithfulness, take off the weak. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Because when something happens, see, when you come up out of there. Amen, Lazarus, right, Lazarus coming forth. So woman, when you come up out of there. Mm, come on, somebody. Take them clothes. See, I, I gave y'all too many, too many trails. <laughs> too many previews. <laughs> Amen. These are coming attractions. Amen. <laughs> Glory be to God. Say, say, la say, lady, say to another lady. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. Mm, yeah, all right. Ain't no longer bound. <laughs> no longer bound. <laughs> okay. All right. Somebody give me Ephesians uh, 1.18. Because the Lord spoke to me with this, and we have to understand. I've been trying to, in, trying to instill and plant the revelation of the power of his resurrection of Jesus Christ and what is available to us in Jesus Christ. Amen? When we miss it, we miss it because we miss to understand the power of his Christ. Amen? All right, who has that 118? Okay, you have it? You have it. Okay. All right, let's see. Okay. Since you're the only one that has it. <laughs> okay. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glory, inheritance, and the saints, and his 
in his incomparably great power for us who believe that power is like the working of his mighty strength, which is exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead. All right, so all of the strength, all of the power, amen, is based on our faith of us knowing the power of his resurrection. Hello? Amen. Amen, and the gift that we have. What did the resurrection do? The resurrection? What did the resurrection do? What did his death do? What did his resurrection do? The penalty of sin. What did the resurrection do? Reconciled us. Okay. What were the earthly events that took forth with his resurrection? Death and his resurrection. Because you can't have a resurrection unless you have a death. Hello, somebody? So we got to die to stuff before you get resurrected. See, we're trying to get resurrected while we're still alive in our stuff. Hmm? And a lot of the stuff is just unbelief. The inability to trust God and fully trust God. To know that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Right? So what were the events that happened? Okay, the veil was broken, where? Torn down, okay, in the Holy of Holies. What did that veil represent? Separation from, who was separated? Man was separated from God. So who's the mediator between God and man? Jesus Christ, amen? The man, Jesus Christ, amen? Now we went through his lineage Remember a couple weeks ago, we went through all the lineage and the birth of Jesus Christ. So he came through a woman. All right. Amen. There was a seed. The seed was the Holy Ghost. Amen. That impregnated her. But she carried it in faith. She could have aborted it. But she said, according to thy word, let this thing be done. What was the other thing that happened? What happened? Stand up and say it. I said, there was an earthquake. Okay. All right. All right. It was an earthquake. What happens with earthquakes? I think I told you back three years ago, four years. What happens with earthquakes? Stuff moves. Okay. What else? All stuff is torn down. And it makes a way for new stuff, right? So you ever see these nice, some kind of buildings? You say, that's a pretty nice building. And then all of a sudden they come and they demo it. So they're going to bring something even the more, right? So guess what? I've been demoed. Mm, somebody. I've been demoed. And the best is yet to come. And see, God has demos. God, you can't, he can't tell you, you can't do it on your own. The shotgun, the tough guy, he, he, he can't do it. Because you're no match for Satan. But if you submit yourself to God, then you become a majority. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. All right. Praise God. And then what else happened? The earthquake, the eclipse. Okay. The skies were black and that was the eclipse. Okay. What else? People got up out of the grave. The saints got up out of the grave and walked around. Amen. Come on. Now listen to me now. Some of y'all saints who are spirit, or who are dead people walking, afraid to tithe, come on, afraid to live holy, amen, afraid not to abuse your bodies, afraid to believe the gospel, amen, you're going to come up out of that grave, that stuff that's been suppressing you, that you were afraid of, amen, glory be to God, somebody ought to tell God thank you, somebody ought to tell God thank you, glory be to God, so the eyes of your understanding are now going to be open. Boom. I, I see it. 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 Because if you see it, Come on. you can believe it. Hey, Listen to me. Come if on. you see it, you can believe it. And if you believe it, you can what? You can do it mm. if you want to. It's the want to element. Come on. Amen? Amen? It's the want to element because faith only works by love. Amen? Okay.
Let's go back to, um, let's go over to Matthew 17. Try to get through this in my limited amount of time. How much time would I have in the uh, Women's Fellowship? All day. What's that? Just an hour? Just an hour? Just, a, just an hour? Where's my prophets? Where's my prophets? Y'all supposed to cast that down. That's why I'm meeting with y'all prophets today, because y'all don't know what to do. I'm serious. Y'all don't know how to handle it. Okay. Let's go to Matthew 17. Now, we're going to, we said last week, and one of the things that we need to do and understand about the fast, or any fast, you fast for a... Well, we do have fasting seasons, yes. But the season is for what? Well, you know of all things, Pastor. Pastor Vine, you know everything. Come on. You can't be stifled ever. No. Can't she, Mark? She knows everything, don't she? <laughs> no, you fast. <laughs> okay. We fast for a, she said, season. We put a we put an R on it. It's a what? It's a reason for a reason. So it's a purpose or purposes. But the ultimate purpose is that we subdue the weightiness, amen, the dependency, the conflict, and the warring of the flesh against the spirit. Because the flesh and the spirit are contrary one to another. Amen? And they war one against another. Why? 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 Why do they war against one another? They're contrary to one another. But what is, what is, what, who, who is causing the war? The flesh. The flesh don't do war to war God, but it's influenced by spiritual wickedness, rulers in darkness, and high places. They have an influence. Now, you don't have to yield to the influence, but remember I told you, you are no match for Satan by yourself. So now you have to partner with the ministry of Jesus Christ, who defeated hell, death, and the grave. Amen? Who has renewed us and brought us back Amen. To the full glory, full position, who we are, amen, who we were before the fall of man. Amen. So I'm going to also talk about Eve in the women's fellowship. Eve is my girl. I know her. <laughs> okay. All right. Praise God. Let's look at 17 and try to keep this brief, but it's, it's a reason. Okay. And the reason that we're going to come from this, uh, come out of this and go into this, because if you go into it the right way, you'll come out of it better. Better. Okay? And we said Friday night that fasting exposes us. Us. Okay? It exposes us. Fasting allows us to see us. Now remember, does fasting please God? Who said the fasting please? Raise your hand if you think fasting pleases God. Raise your hand. Okay, raise your hand. Come on, raise your hand. Don't be afraid. Why y'all so afraid in my class? Everybody's afraid. Pastor Rasan class, y'all be raising your hand, jumping up and down. In my class, everybody. Duh, duh. <laughs> okay, fasting pleases God. Raise your hand. I tell you what, fasting pleases God. Stand up. Stand up. Okay, stand up. You think fasting pleases God? Okay. All right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. All right. Okay. Sit down. Those who think that fasting does not please God, stand up. <laughs> I 
I used to teach RE and special ed. I did. And I used to wonder why I had to do that. Now I see why. Okay. All right. Amen. Okay. Turn over to Hebrews 11.6. I'm going to ask you a question before you go here. Is fasting a work of the flesh or a work of the spirit? A work of the flesh or the work of the spirit? Fasting. It's a work of the flesh. Okay? It's a work of the flesh. It's something you do in your flesh. You decide you're not going to eat. Okay? All right. Now, okay, who has 11.6? Hebrews 11.6. George, stand up please, sir. But without faith, it's impossible to please him, for he that comes to God must be, must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that dig dignity. Now everybody's helping him. Y'all couldn't, couldn't help anybody before. <laughs> couldn't help nobody. <laughs> All right. So what pleases God? Faith pleases God. Amen? Faith pleases God. So you want to see in a minute, what does fasting have to do with faith? Yes? What's a lot? There's a mic right there. Test, testing one, two. Um... If you're fasting unto the Lord, which is out of faith because you've never physically seen him, you've never physically touched him, and you're doing it out of faith, in faith, then you're fasting in faith. So faith, that is going to please God. You come to church out of faith. You uh, tithe in faith that God will adhere to his word and we'll add unto you. Okay. Okay. You do, you know, okay. pray in okay. faith. You do okay. everything in faith. Okay. Your life is based in faith. Let me talk to you about some of the hindrances of faith. Some of the, the, the let, let's talk about some of the hindrances of faith. Hindrance of faith. That the fasting may change, modify, okay, or transform. Let's talk about that, okay? All right. Yes. What are some of the hindrances of faith? No, it, that's too you. You're too complicated for my class. <laughs> <laughs> too complicated for my class. <laughs> you trying to think. <laughs> now, we don't want to be complicated. <laughs> okay, I'm going to make it real quick, okay? Doubt. Unbelief. Okay. <laughs> Selfishness and immaturity. Selfishness and immaturity. Okay? One of the ways in which we can release the grasp of selfishness, okay, is coming into humility because we're trying to do it ourselves. God requires us for us to do something is to submit unto him all cares and all burdens so that he can sustain us and so that he can care for us because we have to be sober and vigilant because our adversary, the devil, wants to what? Devour whom he may. He can't devour everybody, can he? But when you're burdened with things and you're carrying on yourself and you're trying to work it out, remember, we are no match for Satan. No match at all. Okay? So in this season of fact, I want you to understand that when you begin to fast and pray and come in the faith, you deny yourself. Okay? Those places where you're stuck. I know nobody's stuck in here. We don't get stuck. But when you're in the snow sometimes, you ever, what's the first thing you do? You get caught in the snow. 
What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? What's that, Tiffany? You rev on the gas. Then what happens when you rev on the gas, Minister Tiffany? You stuck. You stuck, right? Then somebody comes, like Leroy, and says, what would you tell them? If they're stuck in their reverence. How would I get out of here? Stop and let me instruct you. Like maybe turn the wheel here. Because if you're stuck on the snow and your wheels are going this way, you're going, to, you're going to increase much resistance. So you're going to be stuck anymore, stuck the more. So because of the resistance of the selfishness and the hardness of your heart, you continue to I can't do this. He did this to me, and she did that to me, and the boss didn't do this, and white people don't like black people, and black people don't like white people, and Donald Trump don't like Haitians. And all you got to straighten the wheels out, and we pray for our leaders and those in authority and all kings. Amen? That we might have a peaceful life. Amen? And we'll be well in the sight of God, the Lord and Savior. Amen? 1 Timothy 2, 1. Amen? So it takes a transformation. We say modify the way you think, modify the way you do. Because you'll never modify the way you do till you modify the way you think. Come on, man. Amen? All right? So we're going to look and see at why they're fasting, what Jesus tells them. Okay? What Jesus tells them. And when Jesus tells them something, what is that when he speaks? <clears throat> he speaks a word. And what is that word for? Edification, education, enlightenment, and for you to act on it and you receive the same reward that he would receive. Did Jesus fast and pray? Yeah. Yeah. So if he fasted and prayed, what do we have to do? Fast and pray even the more. Amen? Let's look at this quickly. I only have a couple minutes before First Lady kicks me out. Okay? All right. Let's go to... Okay, let's go to 14, 17, 14. And you know this well of Matthew, but it's a, it's a good teaching lesson on fasting. Amen? And one thing I would advise you not to do, do not be the fasting police officer. Okay? Handle, as Mother Harris says, six, six months a year minding your business. Six months a year leaving everybody else's business alone. Okay? All right? Let's look at this from the fundamentals, all right? And when they had come to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic, suffers severely, he often falls into the fire, often into the water, so I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. So I took him to Mother Stephanie, I took him to Rashim, I took him to the First Lady, I took him to Mother White, I took him to Pastor Rasan. I took him to, to uh, Elder Phaedra, and they could not cast him out. Jesus. Mm. Hello? So they were not able to do this, right? So Jesus is going to instruct them as to why. Say why. Why. Okay, they were not able to do it. So let's read a little bit more, okay? All right? Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless, I think he says over here, um, Oh, those who don't tithe, those who are not Catholics, those who are Methodists. Isn't that what he said? No, he said, oh, oh, it has to be a woman thing. What did he say? <laughs> Faithless and perverse generation. Faithless and perverse. Now, he could have just said faithless. But he said faithless and perverse. What is perverse? Who said it? Twisted. Okay. Oh, that's pretty good. I like that. Okay. So you're perverse. Faithless and perverse. What is perversion? Improper use of something? All right, let's look it up. Look it up. This is a this is a age of information and I want to show you something, okay? And it's something very, very simple. Very, very simple. 
reverse of a person or their actions, showing a deliberate and obstinate okay. desire to behave in a way that is unreasonable or unacceptable, often in spite of the consequences. Who has it? Okay, somebody speak it. Somebody read it. Read it for me. Come on up, Phaedra. I don't have a whole lot of time. Your roadie has me on a route. Showing a deliberate and obstinate desire to behave in a way that is unreasonable or unacceptable, often in spite of the okay. consequences. Unreasonable, unacceptable. The lack of faith is what? Unreasonable and unacceptable to God. Right? Because it's faith that pleases Him. So you're perverse. You don't get perverted overnight. You get perverted over systems systematically over a protracted period of time where you think God can't do it or you're not familiar with it. So you faithless, they couldn't do it because they were faithless and they were perverted, okay? Give me an example how one can be faithless and perverted and look just proper, walk proper, you know, got it going on. Dawson. Yes, sir. What is that? Hmm? What did you say? Oh, see? <laughs> She's not even here. <laughs> no. What was the question? That's all right. We'll get back to you later. Faithless and perverted. A person that walks like that. I just, a, a, a sinner. I don't know. A sinner? Okay. Down unbelief. I'll give you an example. You're always standing in the line for my finances, my finances, my finances. And when it comes time for tithes, you give your tithes. And you're still standing there for finances, for finances. What is the faithless act that has been committed? Say again. You're not trusting God. You're not trusting God. To, um... To Let me come over here. You sound like you know something. <laughs> I come over here. You sound like you know a little bit. You're not trusting God to increase your finances. Once you sow, He'll give it back to you. Okay. That's the purpose of so. That's one of the pur purpose of um, sowing, and not even tithing with money. You know, tithing with time or anything. Tithing with time. Amen. Okay. I like the people that say tithing with time, tithing with the broom. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to see if the next time we pay and pay some taxes. <laughs> okay, well, they take that. Now, listen to me. Listen to me carefully because um, it's like a little setup, but it's so that you'll come up. Okay? All right? I bring up my tithes and I drop my tithes. Okay? All right? And I'm still going through something. God said he's going to open up the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing. So what, what's missing? The offering. The offering. The offering. Because the offering represents your heart. And you don't come out of your heart. Guess what? The tithe is not yours. Okay? The tithe belongs to God, but the offering belongs to you. So God wants to see what you're going to do with your money. Okay? You already did what you're supposed to do with his money. Okay, so it's a faithless and perverse, and you still think you look right. But you're not implementing heaven to move because you haven't done, met heaven, okay, with the vertical and the horizontal, right? Okay, all right. So let's just look at what Jesus said. I'm a little bit over for um, my first lady, but I'm going to read this, this for expedience and time. And he said, oh, you're faithless and perverse, generally. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. So, the disciples see this. They say, man, how you do that? How you do that? How you overcome the things that you've overcome? How you overcome the series of things that have gone down in maybe in your business, starting out a new business? What about the things that you have gone with your children and things you've gone? How you do that? Because you see somebody really walking in something, the question, mother, you want to walk in that too, right? You want to be victorious. So if you was there, what would you have said to Jesus? Hey, 
Show me, show me, right? Show me, show me, show me. That's why it's important to walk and to walk with Jesus, to be in apostolic, prophetic ministries that can bring heaven to earth. Okay? Because heaven's going to be there, but it needs to walk on, work on earth. Jesus said that when he prayed, amen, that thy kingdom come, be what? And will be done on earth as it is what? In heaven. Amen? All right, so this, I'm going to read this, this for expedience and see if I can get a little time, right? Praise God. And let's go to 20. So Jesus said, because of your what? Unbelief. Because of your unbelief, you could not do it. So everything that we think we're stuck on, okay, and not moving is because of our unbelief. Okay? Because you can be stuck, but you say, I, I'm, it's all right for me to be stuck. But I don't choose to stay stuck. Hello, somebody? Amen. Most of the time, it's the refusal to get up and go to another place. That's the perversion. Come on, somebody. Oh, it's this. Oh, it's that. Oh, it's this. And oh, it's that. Right? For surely I say to you, if you have what? Faith. 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 What is faith? Let's go back. What is faith? Because they say, if you have faith, if you don't understand what faith is, you don't have faith. What is faith? The substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Oh, my God. Look how I got here. I got me a teacher. That's in the class. Lord have mercy. So faith is the substance of things what? Hope for. And the evidence of what? Things not seen. Okay. So what makes faith work? Love. Love. Okay. Believe. You have to, Joy, you have to, um, faith without works is dead, so you have to, okay, you okay. have to move on it. Okay, you have to move. It should be demonstration. Demonstration. Is that right? Demonstration. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. So guess what? If you don't have any hope, you'll never activate faith. Okay. Well, I, um, I'm just going to make it. I'm going to see what happens, and I guess on the by and by, and I don't know what this, and I can do this, and I don't have to do that. And I'm getting so sick and tired of this and that. <laughs> Hope deferred makes the heart what? Sick. Hello, somebody? Amen. Amen? Amen. So the hope, okay? And he said, how long will I be with you? All right? And I'm going to close with this. They were saying that if we can't do it, we know Jesus can do it. If I can't do it, I know Bishop can do it. And I know this apostle can do it. I know this and he can do it. Okay? But guess what? God has given you all things pertaining, oh, you can stand up now, I'm turning to life and godliness through the knowledge of his son, Jesus Christ. Yeah. So where are you stuck? And we'll go into the this kind. The this kind. I'm, I'm, I'm stuck. You know why you're stuck? The other part of the perversion. You know why you're stuck? You know why you're stuck? Because you like being stuck. That's your testimony. That's your me, oh my. That's it. Well, you know I'm just human. And you know, well, I'm, I'm just a woman. Well, don't you know like I'm just a man? Well, don't you know that I'm black? Don't you know that I'm Puerto Rican? Don't you know that I'm Dominican? Don't you know that I'm Haitian? And the president don't like me. But by faith, you have an increase. Hey. That. Whenever you activate faith well, in God, see that. okay, turn quickly over to uh, Mark eleven twenty two, okay. Can I wear shorts in the winter when I preach at the men at the women's fellowship? Okay, all right. I'm gonna wear shorts and a t-shirt. Can I wear a baseball hat? <laughs> <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Says too cold. <laughs> I might be a little cold. Amen. I run hot. Okay. I run hot. Okay. Who has that? I just want to show you something. Who has it? Yeah, Mark eleven twenty two. Jesus answering saith unto them. 
Have faith in God. Have faith in God, which means the God kind of faith. When Jesus prayed and they were ragging him out about his time, he should have come because Lazarus was dead four days. Okay, why, why did he wait four days? And not two days or three days. Glory. Three days that they believed the spirit still stayed in. So four days he was decomposing. He was all wrapped up, right? So he came then. And <clears throat> he said, Father, when I pray, I know that you always hear me. You always hear me. So when he was praying, was he praying in unadulterated, complete faith? Because there was no way that he could pray any less because he had the Holy Ghost and he had faith with what? Without measure. Without measure. Amen? Amen. And because of our reliance on the faithfulness of Jesus Christ, when we pray, we activate faith without measure. Unless doubt, unbelief, immaturity, and selfishness gets in there. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So he goes on to tell him, we'll finish that next week, because First Lady said I should make this suspenseful. Okay? Praise God. Amen. So let's give God some praise. Amen. As we conclude this. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen.